Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Scrap Mechanic Survival Unleashed, and we are going to finish the package sorting machine today, along with some other things, potentially, if this goes quickly. I redesigned it, reorganized it, as you can see from the last episode. I used glass instead of net. It looks a lot cleaner. And thank you for that comment saying that these blocks right here have two friction or reminding me that because I did know that, but I actually forgot about it thinking that it was just a warehouse part block and that I shouldn't use it. But since we're in unleashed mode, it doesn't matter what block we use. We can use whatever we want. This episode, we are going to finish the, I believe this is going to be the broccoli and beetroot and tomato separation. So far we have carrots going up here and then we will have broccoli, beetroot and tomato come down here and split off left or right depending on which package is which. The hard part is going to be determining what they are and how to divert them. I do have an idea. So right now I'm just kind of expanding out a base of sorts so that I can split out these packages and I'll trim it as I need to. But first I wanna do a few channel shout outs. As you may have seen on my community tab, I shared a post from Dr. Pixel Plays saying that we just finished a pretty interesting recording sessions and I want to shout those guys out. I don't normally do this and this will probably be the last time I ever shout out any more channels. For now, I want to say thank you to first Dr. Pixel Plays. They will be tagged and linked in the description as well as German Knight and Jonathan Raymaker. They are great creators that I enjoyed recording with. As we get to know each other better, I think we're going to make some pretty fun and interesting videos in the future if we keep this up. And the final shout out is going to be quote unquote, my second channel, Salty Studio. There you can see a lot of members of the community and other from outside the community have fun and play together all sorts of different games and streams and Twitches and it's all sorts of fun stuff with different games that just, it's just more different content than Scrap Mechanic and Prison Architect and whatever else I decide to do at the time. So shout out to them, go sub, subscribe, like, do whatever you want to do. Their links will be in the description and in cards and all this other stuff, but let's get back to the real business. All right, back at the, I don't know what to call this, package sorting system machine, whatever. We are going to do a small idea. I'm not sure how well this will work. We are going to do just a basic, uh, I guess, conveyor belt switching system type thing where we have it facing either straight, left or right from the use of bearings. And we're gonna have it like this and it's going to be, we're gonna just use this slidey block so that we can have maximum friction to hopefully ensure that it gets to the place it needs to go. I guess you could say this is like a pinball machine of sorts. So we're gonna have a controller. We might need two controllers. I'm not entirely sure yet, but we're gonna have a at least one controller and it's going to connect to both of these or just one of these uh, pinball pins. I don't know, what is the technical term? Someone let me know in the comments what the actual term for those bumpers or pin hitters. I don't know. I don't know what those are called. So if we bring over an example package, I know it's carrots, but we're going to pretend that it's not carrots or one of the other things. I will probably need to turn that off, but I don't think it'll actually get in the way because the package just falls straight through. So if we can get a pusher, which I opened up a hole for right here, and launch this package somewhere through here. Okay, we're going to need to spread things these out a little bit wider and make it work. Okay. Okay, so I've spread them out a little bit wider. If I'm not mistaken, I think we can probably make these around 30 degrees or so. 45 is probably the max. I don't want to bend these bumper sticks too far. So now if we push this guy over, he gets stuck. Oh yeah, well that's good. That makes sense. He can't move if he's stuck right there. Maybe just reduce the amount of guidance they have up to here. So now, he should, or I say he, but this package thing, it should be able to slide over like that. Actually, that wasn't too bad. I just tried it again to the left side at 45 degrees and it worked, but there was a lot more instability or instability if that's the proper word. So we'll have to see what we can do with that. But I think overall, this idea will work. In the end, I will actually need multiple controllers and multiple bearings, so I have set them up as so. I'm going to color this. Let's keep it orange. I think orange is a, it's a pretty good color. Maybe. Well, I really need to finish my rebranding, which I haven't done yet. We're going to just keep this at an orange color, and these will turn left and right according to the desired output. 
So let's say this controller makes it turn to the right. Logic gate down preemptively. Connect that, connect that. Turn that on and make this go to its fastest. And so this will be facing to the right and that will separate out. Uh, I'm not really sure yet. Maybe beat roots, maybe not, who knows? But I need to make sure that the other one is off. That's gonna be the fun part, is ensuring that the other logic gate is off when this one is on. And then if I need to go to the straight, then both gates are off. That will be the logic of the day. For now, let's just set up the miniature package pushing system. It's going to be only two piston, piston strong. This one is three because this will go directly to the end. And this one, these will only, yeah, yeah, okay. So these will only go a little bit shorter to the end and then attach to another rail or something. Oh goodness. We're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to make sure that this doesn't go any farther than this wall because we don't want this pipe thing to get in the way. And I don't think I can delete it because it's a terrain asset, which kind of sucks. Anyways, let's get back to it and just know our limitations so that we can make sure everything goes properly. <laughs> wow, that is some very slippery material, I like it. So I now have the package launcher almost set up. I don't have the distances on the uh, pistons calibrated. So we're only going to actually do a single piston launcher because I realize we don't need that much force when it comes to this amount of friction and the distance that needs to be traveled. So I'm not gonna waste any extra pistons or component kits in case you guys are actually doing this legitimately in vanilla. So let's get another package in here. And I think this will launch straight, but I don't really wanna test that. Let's launch to the left and see what happens when this gets into the way. So let's grab that, comes through. The glass looks really nice. Okay. Oh, all right. So we're gonna need a little bit more force. Good to know. Okay, I've tested it at the maximum distance slash force, and it's not going hard enough to reach the end of the rainbow. So actually, that is because of two things. One, it's hitting this side right here, so that's not good. And two, it's because this angle is a bit too steep. So we can actually just decrease this a little bit to the point where we have this gate lined up right here, or I guess not the gate, but flipper, is that what it's called? Is that what it's called, the ping pong flipper? I don't know, let me know in the comments. 35 degrees gives a good overlap and actually keeps this in front of this angle so we don't have any strange collision issues. So now, if the packages go hard enough, I might need to add an extra piston. They should be able to come through, hit this wall and continue their slide through to around here. I will probably need to remove some of this, but that's okay. All right, here is another quick test. It drops down. It's, uh, I might need to have a bigger delay, but it actually made it through. Okay, cool. We might need a bigger delay between the waiting time here because it is still bouncing around a bit. I could add a spring or some way to soften the landing right here, but, uh, I'm lazy, so I'm gonna just, you know, just move it up to 1.5 seconds or so, and that should be fine. There is plenty of time between package movements or creations and launching and whatnot, so I should be good. But the package does get to this area. I don't think I can do too much, so I still may need to make the package launch a little bit farther, but I can try to work with what I have right now. All right, it has landed, it's shot through, it's moving. And it just about got to, well, it got a little bit further on the other side, but that's fine. The little inconsistencies is just scrap mechanic physics, but it does get past this secondary wall right here. So the options I can do are either have a conveyor belt out of wheels, pipes, um, or just have another small piston launching system that slides it along a little bit further to go into the storage packaging facility, which will be coming up in the next episode. All right, I've decided I'm going to do a conveyor-like system, but instead of having on the bottom, I'm going to have it a side rail conveyor system. So it will look essentially like this, and these will be spinning or whatever size wheel I decide to use. I don't know if I should use big or small. From the looks of it, big has more surface area, so I'll need to use less controllers, but 
we'll see if that works out. So that will go and queue up to the package storing and loading facility. So let's just start that. All right, I spent an hour or two or three, I don't know exactly how many hours it's been, but I was messing around and I tried doing this sort of setup and it's actually crap. The collisions for the packages are inconsistent, so only this side works while these are the same exact width. They just wouldn't work. So I had to go back to the drawing board or concepting board if you can, and I've came up with this sort of drawing or I guess conveyor belt system. I'm sure it's been used before, but I'm not, I'm not aware or well versed in the scrap mechanic YouTube videos out there. So if this has been done before, point me to whoever made this and then I can credit them too. But this is something that I came up with on my own time and it's like a train basically. However, due to the collisions, this can basically just inch the package along as these wheels turn. And that also reduces, heavily reduces the amount of bearings needed and kind of makes things look cooler too. So I'm gonna switch over to this sort of system to see if we can move these packages along in an easier manner. So to recreate this system, I guess I'll show you guys how I'm going to do it. It's as simple as getting this lined up. It's a wheel on top of a bearing, on top of a stick, and then I guess whatever ground you wanna be. So this will be replacing that right there and as long as you want it so i think i want it just i don't know how long but i'm going to make it a little bit longer than 16 if you can get a block or a lengthy section right there get a stick of some sort put a bearing on top of that and get a small or big wheel depending on what you need i'm using small put a bearing on the tip of the wheel so whatever edge you want the wall to be on so right here I have it on whatever side this is and then that side as well and then you grab a high friction block and you just slide it over here like so until it connects to this bearing right here technically you can actually extend it you don't need to have such a wide wide gap between these two wheels because you can just extend it past the wheel and it should keep the motion but I'm just doing this to make it look a little bit even and a little bit better as needed. So we're gonna delete that, take this off for now and then extend it when we need to extend out these pipelines later. Now that you've got that, all you need to do is just grab a controller. I'm going to put it right here. So let's connect it up to these two right there. I'm also going to put a logic gate down for good measure. I'm gonna connect it to that. And then I'll put a debug, I don't know what this is called, switch <laughs> to the sw switch or to the logic gate. And then that will be on a looping 360 degree fast moving. Maybe let's do it slow for now. Well, no, let's keep it fast. Let's test it out real quick. Oh, yes. You will notice there is a gap between these two blocks that I did. So I extended it out a little bit further because it was 16 in here. So. They're connected on the wheels, but the thing is these two blocks are not connected to themselves. The fix to this is as simple as taking your weld tool and grabbing one and then dragging it over to the other side like I just did there. That is something a lot of people already know, but in case you did not, uh, now you know. Okay, now let's test it. And it's flipped over, but we can see how fast it is. Oh, check that out. It's like a little train, I like it. I like it. That actually works pretty well. <laughs> I mean, it's moving too, which isn't what I want, but it's doing what I want it to do, which is all that matters. Okay, so now that we have that, what I'm going to do is actually save it and see if I can import it in the future. So export and they are not. Okay, so we now have two of them nicely done and imported. Let's now attach this to the, I guess, sorting machine. I might need to extend it out a little bit depending on how things go, but I think that is good for now. Now, the t hard part is doing this one right because you're gonna need to twist the package. Well, I need to twist the package around and have the package come through and fly out like so. In order to do that, we're gonna need to make sure that this is in a proper location. And if I want to, I can always just move these in too. So it's kind of like adjustable. It'll just look a little bit dumb if you have one that's wider than the other. So I just want to make sure this is good right now. Now I just need to switch off the control 
over here, I just need to put this logic gate to that one. And I need to, I think, flip these bearings like so. And then I press the start button. And now it's doing its weird little pumping action. And let's just, you know, put a package in here and see what happens. I know it's not going to work, but we can always hope for the best. Oops. All right, it's falling down. It should be lined up. It comes through. Oh, I completely forgot to uh, set up these right here. So I have a small little conveyor belt of just limited bearings right here at the bottom to push the package forward into this area. I think if I set these up correctly, it should work, maybe? I doubt it. Let's just punch it in real quick and see what happens. Oh, I'm off by a couple. If I just snag another row on top of it like that, so now that this is too wide, if I can pull this here and keep that on, this won't turn off properly, so we're gonna just hope for the best. And now let's turn this back on. All right, let's see what happens. Oof. So now it's, for some reason, stopping on the line right here. The other one pushed it in. <laughs> hey! It's kind of working. All right, now that the second side now reaches a little bit. And the problem is with this wheel right here. So what we're going to do is just take it off and see what happens. Okay, the wheel is off. The package is down. It might break. Okay, it snagged it. It's pulling it through. You love to see it. You really love to see it. I know this is carrots and this is the tomato section. I just, you know, this is for testing purposes, but it worked. It actually worked. I was not expecting it to actually work that easily. So now I have to just do that for the rest of these sides. I might have some collision issues here, but I think if we can offset the timing, we should be good. And now I'm going to work on these middle and left side portions, and then we're going to do a dry run. Okay, <laughs> we did it. it. Took another two hours to do some debugging and fixing and adjusting, but I think I've got a 90% working version of the package sorter. So this is how it goes. I haven't finished the connections yet, but I added them here. So carrots will turn on the top row. Basically, you guys seen that before. Carrots make the carrots go up top. Tomatoes will turn on this gate right here which then turn on or well, just then turns this little flipper thing and lets the tomatoes get sorted out and whatnot and then green actually doesn't do anything because it should make sure that these two are off which keeps it straight to go down green and then this beetroot color purple-ish maroon maybe i don't know uh it goes down the left basically so you know how that works and now we don't have well we have we can actually do it let's just do it right now so what I want to do is connect the filter to the pieces. So this is the orange filter and that you can see that's already connected way over yonder. So let's do this beetroot first. Now for the tomato. Now the filters will trigger this gate. Unfortunately, well, I can't do it right now. These don't aren't automatic yet. So I have to turn them on manually, but I can actually just put a little gate right here, which turns on everything. So I will actually just do that right now. All right, my game is starting to hate this, like low key, really starting to hate this completely. So we're gonna have to do some efficiency measurements here and there. We can change up the logic gates for sure. We're gonna have to do some wireless connections for uh, this because all this is connected and we're gonna need to figure out some wireless things. We can do that with the pistons. Yeah, but if we turn it on, this is basically what it looks like. It's like a weird little shimmying machine. And it looks pretty good. We can extend this out if we need to, but I don't know if I really want to do that. We'll see though. So let's actually send our drone around to see what happens. This is not going to work. I can assure you right now that this isn't going to work the first time like that right there. Let me actually just, without further ado, let's actually send the drone out to see if we can make it work. I don't think it will work because we had some weird spazzing with the... Oh, yeah, we have. So what we're going to actually have to do is grab this right here and exit the game. Hopefully restarting the game will fix things. We shall see. 
Okay, the game's been reloaded. Uh, we're gonna go for it. So we're going to send the drone out to harvest its individual pieces. And I know there's a couple still, a couple bugs with the farm still. I know that was freaking out, so maybe it'll hopefully not freak out anymore, but we'll see. And then I know this also will have some trouble with the filters as well, but we can also just hope for the best, really. I do know I need to turn up the timers real quick while I wait for this to harvest. You guys have seen this thing harvest before, so I don't think I need to like watch every single bit and piece. 30. That allows our filters to run through, hopefully. And right now you can see it's picked up red, or what's this called? Tomatoes and carrots. So, good. So you can see that happen real time. It doesn't, it's not going to pick up the uh, broccoli because those are still there, but it just picked up beetroot. You can see that, that one just lit up. So now we have at least three of the four filter functions that are going to be shown off today. Next episode, we can finish the broccoli. I also did finish the watering function, I think, for the broccoli, so that should be fine. Up first is going to be the carrots. So the carrots will be really simple. It'll just go straight through here. Uh, I think it takes around 20 of them, so there'll be two packets going through this at a time right now. Okay, the car has just exited the, what's the called thing, the loop. And now the farms should be trying to get their job done. And as you can see here, it is actually watering the broccoli again for its second row. And... Um... Should be good. I don't know what's going on here. Oh no. Shoot. I forgot. I forgot the mod that I had installed for our recording with... What's his face? Dr. Dr. Pixel? I think it has a font mod installed. And so now all the uh, tubes are being funky. So I'm going to have to do it and revalidate the game and whatnot. But I'll do that later. Anyways, the car has now made it to the packaging station. Hopefully the mods or anything doesn't break the actual thing, but it's coming through. And as you can see here, the carrot signal thing or whatever, carrot filter is open, meaning that we're good to go. Launches is out and it'll just, <laughs> that launches out way too fast, but that's kind of fun. Here comes the second one. Let's see if we can catch it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this place bugged out heavily, so I don't know what's up with that, but the car actually was waiting there for the farms to get finished, but I just finished them myself. So now the car is going to go to the right and then turn down this road right here to drop off the tomatoes and the beetroots. There is a small bug, actually I just realized, is these two sensors are close to each other. Haha, <laughs> nice, you saw that move. Um, so the car wheel actually activates this filter right here when it's not ready. So that actually might break things, but we shall see. It is now trying to do the tomatoes, and that should have turned on the tomato filter. The tomato filter is on, and oh, that needs to be the off, and so there we go. I forgot that switch is there. And let me remove this switch too. And that puts the tomatoes out there. And now if I keep this on, it should bring the tomatoes in, hopefully. I'll have to do a wheel or something so that we can prevent some of the um, sticking issues that we're seeing right here. But overall, it worked. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to remove that one, but you can just see it just switched to the beetroot filter. So now the beetroots are coming out and beetroot packets just came out or it's coming out. Goes through, goes down, it gets sent in and across, through. Wow, I just get that one time where my launcher wasn't strong enough to actually do it. So we're going to have to increase the strength, strength real quick. But let's push this in a little bit. Mm, there we go. Well, I had to kind of reposition it a little bit. But I think I can do some fixes here and there, but I'll have to do that later. All right, we have fully loaded this uh, car with all sorts of vegetables. And we're going to manually trigger the uh, automation sensors because... I didn't really want to do it, wait for them to grow automatically. So we're going to pretend that this one was triggered too for beetroots. And now we need beetroots. So all four vegetables are needed. 
Let's let's. I guess this is just the test right now. This is going to be a full scale dry run test, and we're going to see exactly how this is handled. Car has now reached the carrots, and this thing came out. I don't know if you saw that in the background, but now it is dropping off a whole lot of carrots and putting them down here and launching them at me. Let me just catch them real quick. Okay, next is broccoli. The car is at the broccoli station. Packets are coming out. And, oh, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit hard of a launch. So we're gonna have to turn these down a little bit. So, oh, okay, so it happened. That bug that I said that was going to happen just happened. Uh, first of all, the packets actually went through the broccoli, which is good. However, the car did in fact drive over that sensor right there causing the um, beetroot sensor and beetroot filter to get flagged. And now it's thinking it needs to do f beetroot and this last broccoli packet was still coming out. And so, yeah. So we can fix that, I'll fix that off camera. But now we're gonna wait and see what happens between the tomato and beetroot filters. Finally, we should have the tomatoes. Oh, I guess, prim premier, I don't know what the word, penultimately, I guess, because we have beetroots next. But tomatoes are going to be launched out. The filter has switched to the tomato lane, and now they should be launched, not too hard, but right into the tomato feeder, and that will push it along the line. We're gonna hopefully think, make sure this is consistent. We can probably fix some inconsistency bugs later, but I think so far tomatoes are my most consistently like working uh, filter because this was actually the first one that I worked on and then worked on the rest of them. I think I got a little bit lazy doing the rest, but so far I've three for three, so that's good. Another bug with the um, tomatoes and whatnot, it's the filter changes too early when in fact I should have a small delay before working on the other vegetables. But it looks like right now the beetroots, whoa. The beetroot canisters are too, like the angle is too steep. Okay, let's do the beetroot thing again real quick. Okay, the car is now heading over to the beetroots. It, the control center thinks, believes that it has beetroots on it and it does have a few left. So we are going to let those get launched out and we're going to see if this filter works because I think my angling was a little bit too steep and that was causing it to stop early. Let's see what happens. All right, package comes out, gets hit, it goes through. Uh, there's a little bit of a uh, dangling. Not sure if I'm a fan of that. So let's actually increase that angle a little bit. Okay, well, this one's a little bit bugged. I'll just say that for now. But I mean, overall, the filter sort of works. If you guys can think of improvements and bug fixes for this, please let me know. I do think we are stuck on some ledge right here and that's causing it to actually not have the space because it's not rotated the right direction. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to rotate these things properly before sending them into the um, tubes because they only work when they're straight. So yeah, next episode we're going to I'll show off the finished like actual product, all the bug free product of this. And then next we're going to work on getting these over to some sort of sorting and packing facility where I can store a whole bunch of these at the same time. But until then, I hope you guys have a great morning, afternoon, night, or evening, and I'll see you next time.